excluded, and then the blue state name for the marker and spell your first and last name. Cammy back. And spell your first and last name, please. C A M M Y B A C K. Go ahead, pass. Thank you. Ms. Back, I'm going to ask you to keep your voice nice and loud for me, okay? Okay. Now, is it true, Miss, that you work at a retail store that sells firearms? Yes. And that's in Oxford, Michigan? Yes. Okay. Um, how long have you worked there? Uh, four years. Okay. What's your current title? Uh, office manager. Have you always been the office manager? No. As office manager, um, do you assist with gun sales? Yes, I do. Okay. And what did you do before you became the office manager? I was a counter. I'm sorry? I worked the counter. Okay, the counter? Yes. Okay, so you would deal with customers? Yes. And you're familiar with the procedure when someone um, purchases a firearm? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, there is a specific process when somebody purchases a handgun, is that correct? Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about that, please? So, when you come in to purchase a firearm, whether it's um, a handgun or a long gun, um, we have to have your ID. Um, you have to fill out a 4473. What's that? Um, it's a federal firearms form for okay. the customer. Um, once that is done, um, myself or whoever will run a NICS check um, on the computer. Okay, can you tell us what that is? That is where you send it over to... Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh. <laughs> uh, to the FBI, and okay. then they take it from there. Okay. Do you know what happens with that? When I do the not. FBI? Right. Nope. So you take this information in, and the uh, customer fills out certain forms, and you send that off? Yes. Okay. And how long does that process usually take? Um, sometimes it could take seconds. Sometimes it could take up to 30 minutes okay. or longer. Is someone able to walk in and buy a firearm, or to buy a firearm and walk out with that gun purchase that day? As long as they pass the background check. As long as everything checks out? Yes. Now what happens if things um, don't check out, or if there's some kind of delay? Does that ever happen? Yes. Okay, and tell me about that. So, um, if a customer is delayed, uh, you we are giving them a Brady date, which is five days. Um, within those five days, um, the next check could come back as a perceived, or it could come back as a denied. Um, after five days, if there's no response, then we are allowed to um, hand the firearm over to the customer. Okay. Do you know the circumstances in the background why somebody might be approved or denied? I do not. Okay. Now, when the store you work at sells a firearm, do you also provide a ATF pamphlet on handgun safety? Yes. Is that with every handgun purchase? With every handgun, yes. Okay. And tell me about that pamphlet, please. What kind of information is contained in there? Um, it just states um, the do's and the don'ts um, as far as, you know, when you buy a firearm, child safety, um, how to lock it, um, just to pretty much keep your firearm safe and out of the hands of, you know, anyone that doesn't need to have it. Okay. And that is... Uh, provided by the ATF? Yes. Okay. That's the, Al the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms? Yes. All right. Does your store also provide a trigger lock statement? Yes. Okay. And is that one of the standard forms that has to come with the firearms purchase? Yes. Okay. And tell me what that is, please. So it's just um, the trigger um, lock form, um, we take and we make sure we check the box that it has the lock in the box, and that it has a, a box that can be locked. Okay. Now we say the lock in the box. What do you mean by that? The trigger lock. Okay. So when your store sells a firearm, you also provide a, a lock with it? Yes. Okay. And that's not an actual gun safe, correct? That's, that's a smaller locking device? Yes. All right. Um, and that happens with every um, handgun sale from your store? Yes. I'd like to direct your attention to November the 26th of 2021. Do you remember that day? I do. Okay. And were you working? Yes, I was. Did you, well, first of all, I should ask you, as office manager and someone who's been employed at the store for four years, every time a firearm is sold, is there a receipt kept? Yes. Okay. Um, on November the 26th, 2021, did you sell a handgun to James Crumlin? I did. Okay. 
And was he there with somebody else during that purchase? Yes, he was. Okay, was it an adult or was it a teenager? Teenager. Okay. Did you come to learn who that person was? Later, yes. Okay, and, and you came to learn that it was the defendant's 15-year-old son? Yes, sir. Okay. But you didn't know that at the time? No, I did not. Okay. Now, during the purchase uh, between yourself and James Crumbly, did his son do anything? Never. Okay, so he was there, present, but he didn't interact with you? No. I'd like to direct your attention also to June the 15th, 2021. Um, did James Crumbly make another purchase of a firearm that day? That I cannot say. Okay. If I showed you receipts, um, would that refresh your memory, you think? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go through some exhibits with you. They'll be on the screen in front of you. These okay. are all stipulated, too. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. This is exhibit 24. This is, do you recognize this is a receipt from the store you work at? Yes. Okay. This is June the 15th, 2021. Do you see the date? Yes. All right. And the purchaser is James Robert Crumbly? Yes. And it has his address. And it has the item uh, purchase. And that's a Cobra Classic for $180 total. Yes. And that's actually a, a 22 Derringer pistol. Is that correct? Yes. 24 has been admitted, I believe, with stipulation. Um, I, I believe that Ms. Smith was willing to uh, stipulate to 24 to 30. Is that accurate? That's correct. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 are admitted. So, yeah. Thank you, Jeff. This is Exhibit 25 right here. It says pistol sales record. Can you tell us about that, please? So each time that a pistol is sold, we have to uh, provide the customer with a pistol record, um, they they are given those and they are instructed to have those dropped within 10 days of the purchase. Okay. Now, this has a description of the pistol, is that right? Yes. So it says, this is a Cobra Classic, we just saw the receipt for, mm -hmm. do you see that on there? Yes. Okay, and it says pistol shot in the number two, what does that mean? It's a two shot. Okay, so it's a small handgun? Yes. And barrel length 2.25. Is that in inches? Yes. Okay. It says purchase transfer date is June the 16th of 2021, whereas the receipt was June the 15th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what happened there? So um, I believe that Mr. Crombley may have gotten a delay on June 15th, and he had a proceed either later in the day on June 15th, or he may have gotten a proceed early morning on June 16th. Okay. And that's because there's some kind of delay in the background information? Yes. Um, Ms. Mack, is it true that some handguns sold by the store actually come with their own cable locks, not just from the retailer themselves? Yes. Okay. So, whereas in on, on uh, November the 26th, you provided a, uh, a lock not every handgun has to be provided a lock by your store. Yes, it the, does. Because the manufacturer gives the lock themselves. Yes. Okay. So I don't think that was clear, so I just want to back up for a second. So uh, some guns that come in from the manufacturer, the manufacturer do not provide locks. Okay. We have to provide those. Got it. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. No, that's my fault, not yours. Okay. The um, Six Hour, for example, they do not provide their own locks. Is that right? Some they do, some they do not. Okay. And if they don't, then you would fill in that gap? Yes. All right. Now, this is Exhibit 26. This is a receipt, James Robert Crumbly, June the 16th. And this is the Caltech P17 22LR, total price $349. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, this is Exhibit 26. And again, this is June the 16th. That's the day that he would have received the Derringer. Yes. Be right? And here's Exhibit 27, which is the actual pistol sales record. And again, purchase transfer date, June 17th of 21. So there was a delay in this purchase as well? Yes. Okay. And this description is, it's a 16 shot, barrel length is 3.8 inches. Yes. So it is, it's bigger than the Derringer. Yes. Okay. Now, 
uh, moving on to Exhibit 28. This is from November the 26th of 21, the date we've already spoke of. So this is a receipt, total of $519.35. And again, James Robert Crumbly. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And this is the day you recall seeing somebody with him? Yes. His son. Okay. Do you recall if his son was with him in June, or did you not complete that purchase? I did not complete that purchase. Okay, that's fair. But as office manager, you can tell us that those records are from your store. Yes. Okay. Here's Exhibit 29. This is the pistol sales record. And this is from the Sig Sauer on November 26. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so this is a 15 shot and it's 3.75 inch barrel. Yes. Is that right? Okay. And he walked out with that gun on November the 26th, 2021. Is that the date that we have right there? Yes. Okay. Now, hypothetically speaking, if there was a 15-year-old who walked in your store and tried to buy a handgun, would you let him? Absolutely not. Okay, that would be illegal, right? Yes. Here's Exhibit 30. This is a portion of the financial, or the firearms transaction record. I think you referred to it as a 4473. Do you recognize this? Yes. Okay. And was this provided? This was filled out by James Crumley? Yes. Okay. And what's the purpose of this form here? That is to keep a record for ATF for all firearms that are sold. So there's certain certain boxes are checked here and the condition of the gun is notified in this case it was it was used yes okay um, and the purchaser has to assert certain things before he can he can walk out with that with that gun is that, is that right yes and one of those boxes are are you the actual transfer or you are the actual buyer of the gun it's not for somebody else right because it is not legal for someone to buy a gun for somebody else through your store, correct? No, it is. Well, that person has to come in and, and uh, fill out this paperwork. That yes. Right? right. So it would not be legal for a adult, for example, to check this box that the gun is for himself and then transfer it to a child. Yes. Can you dip, tell us the difference between a cable lock and a trigger lock? So a cable lock, um, you have to take the slide off of the pistol and run the cable through the barrel and bring it out and to lock. Trigger lock goes directly on the trigger. Okay. And do you recall what was provided to James Trembley in June on, on November the 26th? I believe it was a cable lock. A cable lock. Okay. So it looks like a rope. Yes. And then at the end of the rope, there is a, a locking mechanism? Yes. And then that's um, fastened by a key, would that be right? Correct, yes. Okay. There's some firearms that can't be secured with a cable lock versus trigger lock, or is it unique to certain guns that you need one versus the other? I don't believe so. Okay. Does your store always provide either a cable lock or trigger lock, or does it depend? They, we provide both. Both. Yes. Okay. But on this particular occasion, on November of 2021, it was a cable lock. It was a cable lock, yes. I have nothing for it. Oh, hang on one second. Sorry. Thank you, Judge. Nothing for it. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to go back through the exhibits. Would it be easiest if I had the prosecution go back through them if I ask, or is it easier if I just transfer it to my laptop? Okay, I can do this. Okay. Um, can you put up exhibit number 24, please? Just so that the jury can see it. And if you want, I can put it on my computer. I have them. Oh, we have another flash drive, don't we, that we provided to the jury? I, yeah. I have them on my computer. Do you want me to take the reins and use my laptop? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, we just need to switch this over then. Okay. Hit that button, and then I've got to plug in my... Right, and 
I'm just going to pull up the exhibits and we'll have Todd Willem, Mr. Godwin, plugs them in. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Shannon Smith and I represent Mrs. Crumbly. I'm going to ask a couple of questions. And if I ask anything confusing, can you please just slow me down and let me know? Sure. Okay, thank you. It's not my job to confuse you. I want to make sure you understand each question I ask. Okay. Um, the first exhibit the prosecution showed, Exhibit 24, which was admitted, is a receipt for a Derringer gun. And I just want to be clear that Derringer gun was purchased by James Crumbly, correct? I cannot say. If you look at the receipt. By the receipt, yes. Okay, so by the receipt, it indicates James Crumbly purchased the weapon. Mm -hmm. and it's, yes, 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 I'm sorry. And it's fair to say that Jennifer Crumbly's name does not appear anywhere on that receipt. No. We talked about Exhibit 25, the pistol sales record, um, and this was the uh, pistol that was bought back in June of 2021. On this receipt, or I'm sorry, on this pistol sales record, James Crumbly is the person who purchased this pistol. Is that correct? Yes. Jennifer Crumbly's name does not appear anywhere on this pistol sales receipt, correct? No. I'm sorry? No. Thank you. All right, exhibit 26 was admitted. This is a receipt from a Caltech gun that was purchased, correct? Yes. And again, on this receipt, it indicates that James Robert Crumbly purchased the gun? Yes. And J Jennifer Crumbly's name does not appear anywhere on that receipt? No. All right, I'm turning to Exhibit 27, which was admitted. This is the pistol sales receipt from the Caltech that we just talked about in the, in the prior receipt. I'm sorry, this is the sales record. The sales record indicates James Crumbly bought this, this gun. Yes. Okay, and Jennifer Crumbly's name is not listed as the purchaser or she's not anywhere on this record, correct? Yes. All right, I'm going to number 28, which has been admitted. This is the receipt from the Sig Sauer that was purchased in November of 2021, correct? Yes. You have a direct memory of the purchase on the Sig Sauer gun, correct? Yes. And on this receipt, this gun was purchased by James Crumbly, correct? Yes. The receipt does not have Jennifer Crumbly's name. No. And when this gun was purchased, James Crumbly was accompanied by a teenage boy and no one else, correct? Correct. And you were testifying that um, you didn't have any interactions with the teenage boy who was with Mr. Crumbly. Correct. And when you saw this teenage boy with Mr. Crumbly, there was nothing about him that stood out to you as unusual or weird or something that would have raised concern about selling the gun to James Crumbly with his son, correct? No. I'm sorry, there, the court's making a record, so it's, it's really important we talk one at a time. I, I'm not trying to cut you off in any way. I just need to make sure the record's really clear. Sure. So I'm just going to re-ask, and I'm, 
I'm doing it just to have a clear record. When, when you saw Ethan Crumbly with Mr. Crumbly buying the gun, there was nothing about him that concerned you about selling the weapon to Mr. Crumbly, correct? Correct. And on that date, you vividly remember it was only the two of them at the gun store purchasing that weapon, correct? Correct. And again, on Exhibit 29, this is the pistol sales receipt. Jennifer Nick Crumbly's name does not appear anywhere on the pistol sales receipt, correct? Correct. And I'm going to open Exhibit 30, which has been admitted. This is the firearms transaction receipt. This is specific to the November gun that was purchased, the Sig Sauer, correct? Yes. And on this form, James Crumbly is the only adult that filled out this form, correct? Yes. Jennifer Crumbly's name does not appear anywhere on this form. No. And... The information provided um, was all provided by James Crumbly, correct? Correct. And you cannot sell a weapon to a 15-year-old who walks into your store if they came in and wanted to buy a gun, correct? Correct. And if you don't know the answers to these questions, I can ask someone else, but I'm going to ask you... Um, when a parent buys a gun, um, you have, a parent has a right to take their child to a shooting range, correct? Yes. A parent has a right to take their child hunting, correct? Yes. A parent has a right, when they own a gun, to allow their child to use the gun at things like a gun range or hunting or along those lines, correct? Yes. You testified that with the Sig Sauer gun, it did not come from the manufacturer with a lock, correct? A cable lock. That was a used gun. Okay, so the used gun did not come with a cable lock in the case, correct? It may have. If it didn't, you provided a cable lock yes. to that gun. Yes. And in order to take a cable lock off a gun, you have to use a key, correct? Yes. And the key is, it's not just any key, it's a key specific to that cable lock, correct? Yes. And in Michigan, there is no, as far as you know, and if you don't know, you can tell me and I can ask another witness, there is no requirement that a person has to store a gun in a safe, correct? Judge, I'm going to object. That's calling for legal conclusions. Well, it, 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 it is. I'm assuming you guys could stipulate to that at some point. But, or, Can we other way is that appropriate for this or, purpose? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah, take care of that officer. later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you sell guns to people at your store, you also, um, you do not, you're not required to also sell them a safe for that gun, correct? Correct. As a precaution, if it does not come with a cable lock, you make sure that every gun that leaves your store is sent out with a cable lock if one can be put on that gun, correct? Cable lock or trigger lock. Or trigger lock. Yes. Okay, thank you. There is not any time that you recall seeing Mrs. Crumbly at the store, looking at guns, considering buying a gun, anything along those lines, correct? Correct. And of course, I don't expect your memory's perfect, 
I'm just asking by recollection, you don't recall that Mrs. Crumbly was in there? She was not, no. It's also not illegal for a father to bring children in or a teenager in with them to purchase a weapon, correct? Correct. Mr. Crumbly is not the only person who has ever been in the store purchasing a weapon with minors present, correct? Correct. And there is nothing that when you come to the door of the store that says minors cannot enter the store or, or look at what, what you have in terms of your stock, correct? Correct. May I have just a minute? Sure. I have no further questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just very briefly. Ms. Mack, I'm just going to clear a few things up. I'm afraid I wasn't terribly clear. Sure. Things. Um, first of all, after the shooting in Oxford High School, agents from the ATF, they came and spoke with you. Would that be right? Yes. Okay. In ATF, that's the government agency that sort of regulates the finance or the firearms transactions. Yes. Okay, at least to your understanding. Yes. Okay. And when you, well, first of all, let me ask you this. Do you recall on November the 26th when that Sig Sauer was sold to James Crumbly, if he shopped around at all or if he went right to that gun? He went right to that gun. And did he make any statements about that? That he had had his eye on it for some time. I would object to the hearsay of the uh, co-defendant who's not present in this trial. It's not offered for the truth of the matter, sir, to judge. It's offered to show that he went right for that gun. Well, I guess he, he asked whether or not he uh, looked around. He didn't, he didn't look at anything else. No, ma'am. Thank you, Judge. And um, were you able to tell if um, that transaction for the six hour on 11 26 21 was for cash or for credit? It was cash. Cash, okay. And you did that by comparing the receipts on November the 26th, and there were no credit or check transactions that have been made in the amount of $519.35. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Can I ask you, there's also an Exhibit 31. And oh, that's going to come through Agent Brandon. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you didn't have to uh, bring this up the stack. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you.